Hey, Jimmy Morick here at Spetzel Brewery in Shiner, Texas, and you're watching The Beer Diaries. Rolling fast down I 35 through the day and past the Hey folks, I'm Greg from The Beer Diaries. I am at a Texas institution here at the Spetzel Brewery in Shiner, Texas. These guys have been operating since 1909 and they're still winning gold medals at GABF. Last year they won three. I'm here with the brewmaster, mm -hmm. Jimmy Morick, and we are going to talk about what they do here. Mm -hmm. So thanks so much for uh, allowing us to be in your incredible uh, brew house. Well, thanks for having me. This is uh, going to be a, a nice little talk. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and I mean, you guys are, to put it into context for people, you're in a, in a fairly small town here in Texas. Like, Shiner's not a big city. Fairly small, <laughs> 2,000 people. I would think we're really small. <laughs> yeah, and so and you're kind of almost, you're sort of, you know, west of Houston, east of San Antonio, south of Austin. So it's kind of, you're a bit towards the coast and kind of in the middle there. Yeah, we're kind of, kind of in the middle. Right? We like to say between San Antonio and Houston, you know, kind of in the middle, but on the interstate town. Right. A real point of pride for the community. Like, this is, you guys have been around for over 100 years. You have people coming from all over Texas and all over the world to visit. What's, what's, what's that like, having people come here to, you know, check out what mm -hmm. it's all about? The people coming now are so interested in, 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 in craft brews yeah, and, yeah. and seeing where it's made, how it's made, and you know, if you look at our, our history, we're uh, you know founded by Czech German immigrants. So, right. uh, again, over here on the banks of the Boggy Creek here in Shiner, <laughs> Texas, and so obviously, I mean, you said you, you were founded by German and Czech immigrants. I mean, the, the beer we're drinking here, the premium, is is pretty much the original formal formula that that Cosmo Spetzel brought over, right? This this is um, actually uh, one of the originals. This is a beer that I grew up on, also. Yeah, here, you know, I'm a... so pre-prohibition because we're talking about the early early 1900s. This is a right. pre-prohibition beer, pre-prohibition recipe. It's been around since the beginning. Um, you know, even our you know signature uh, cotton bowl uh, yeah. label. You know, that's a signature because it was a, a big cotton farming community. Right. So right. the original label came from the cotton bowl. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it goes back a long way. And you personally have been here for a while. I think you said you've been about. 35 years? Is yep, uh, 35, working on 36. Uh, Where did you start? What part of the brewery did you start in? I was uh, 17 years old when I actually started here and actually working in, 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 in the bottle shop. Uh, that's back when we had uh, bottle washers at that time and we used uh, Like hand, hand washing kind of? Return, not hand washing. We had a machine to do it, but okay. it was uh, returnable bottles that we actually used. So I ran the, uh, the back end of the uh, the bottle washer. Oh wow! How many how many how many uh, bottles could that one do at the time? Well, you know, we were doing at that time like 210 bottles a minute. You know, that's, we're not, doing, that's pretty fast. That was pretty fast, yeah. and, and we're doing like you know 650 <laughs> bottles a minute now. Yeah. A lot of action going on there, but it's a really impressive operation. But I think uh, my understanding is you may even be expanding that as well. And we're oh, we're wow. finally kind of outgrowing it. And one thing I noticed um, again on the tour that was really amazing here was that. This is a real family feel about this brewery. Do you, want, do you want to talk a little bit like that, just that the family feel that exists here? Oh, it, it's it's definitely here. Uh, again, like I said, personally, I had you know uh, a brother work here, I had a sister work here, I had my son working here for a while. It's just a a long list of you know family members and, 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 and the, people you grew up with. And your assistant brewmaster is the son of the former brewmaster. Prior yes, to you. Uh, I worked under uh, John Hebner. Uh, Brewmaster was here for 39 and a half years, and I worked under him for 27 years. And then when I became brewmaster in 2005, uh, his son became my assistant brewmaster. <laughs> so the, the legacy is going to keep. It's it's, it's still it's still here. Yes. The Gambrinus Company um, bought uh, Spetzel, and it's now part of their group. But you guys, I mean, how long ago was that? Was that uh... the Gambrinus Company bought us in 1989? And the co and the combined group, I'm not sure if it's just you guys or how it all fits, but. I think it's fourth in terms of the craft breweries in the United States. Is that yes? Uh, you know, putting us together, yes. Yeah. So that's which is pretty impressive. I mean, that you're and it and it really don't feel that way. We still feel like like we're you know the the small guys on yeah. on, on the block because way back when you had the you know the Budweiser, the Miller here in Texas, you had Stroh's here in Texas, you had Pearl, you had Lone Star, and then it was us, which we were just a very little small little yeah you know, so like entity. a small small like it yeah. really predated that sort of the new craft movement you guys were kind of mm -hmm. making like local beer 
fresh local beer back in the day with all these giants kind of mm. trying to. So I feel like we're know. almost the uh, the pioneer of craft uh, brewing way back when. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's pretty amazing. And then, I mean, the, the, the barrel counts have rot, risen pretty significantly though, haven't they? Like, yeah, it's through the years. Yeah, we were producing around, you know, 38,000 barrels when Mr. Alvarez bought us in, in 1989, the Gambrins Company. And, and, you know, we're doing over 500,000 barrels now. Wow. So. I think there's also expansion plans to get even bigger potentially in the future, have the capacity to grow bigger. Well, yeah, we're in uh, 44 states right now, and uh, again, but we're we're growing in Texas itself. You know, Texas is our biggest market, uh, was our home market for many years. Yeah, yeah. And the consumers were starting to want something different, just just uh, you know, straight line lager beers. Yeah. So we kind of started venturing out 12, 14 years ago, where yeah. we start looking at say, hey. Let's use some of our brewing expertise and show some of our craft brew prowess and yeah. start uh, putting out some different beers. So, Well, now, I mean, now the lineup's really extensive. We started this, this series when we were working our way up to 100 years of brewing. So, like, so up, as you're approaching yeah, it? we're approaching 100 years. We put up different beer each year, and then we're working our way up to 100 years. And, yeah. and again, then we had some of those beers that were so successful that we actually brought them on, you know, brought them back and, and put them uh, as part of the family. I think and, it, it, it lists the number as brewed at, too, wasn't it? Like, I think I saw, I saw something. Yeah, like that like, like, Shadow 97 here. That was 97 yeah, so, years so, of brewing. This is 103. And, and 103, 103 years of brewing. Yeah. So. So that's, that's, a neat little, that's a neat little thing I learned on the tour. I didn't realize that, that these were kind of anniversaries that then became permanent, but you also could commemorate it with mm -hmm. the year that you came up with it. And so we kind of, uh, you know, we really kind of shied away from, you know, calling it anniversary, but now we're starting to do seasonals and we're adding on yeah. seasonals and, and changing the season out every once in a while, but we've been very successful with our seasonals. Mm -hmm. Obviously now you're branching into ales and the Saison, of course, is to clean ale. Like, is it, is it uh, something that now, now is, you're sort of, like you said, flexing those, those crafty muscles. Yes, we are. You know, in the FM 966, you know, that's a real farm to market road right over here, down the <laughs> road here. So again, trying to stay true to styles and, and yeah. true to, to what this community is. And again, Shiner is not just named a beer, but it's named this town. So you know, we're kind of linked uh, yeah. together with that. So we kind of keep some tradition there also. Shiner Bach you know, represents the, the brewery and everything. It represents mm -hmm. the, the local the local folks. Yeah, yeah. Shiner Bach is our flagship beer. You know, it, it again, uh, it, it's what puts Shiner on the map, not yeah. just our beer, but 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 Shiner itself. And how long? How long? So how long has Shiner Bach been around in its its current form? Is it well, is it we, changed over the years, or has it been pretty constant? Or yeah, we've brewed it full time. Uh, it's like 1979 when we started brewing full time. It was always a seasonal. We actually started brewing it full time in, in about 1979. Yeah, there's a sort of picture as you come in and talk to your brewing process. It talks about the use of corn in some of your beers, which you know, some some craft beer guys go, "Oh my goodness, there's corn in there!" But other people go, "Well, actually, it's a it's a legit ingredient." And if you look at the the, the corn aspect of it, what was this uh, this area when we uh, when they constructed this brewery on this side in 1909? It was a farming community. Yeah. They had corn, so yeah. I mean, there was uh, stuff that they. It was necessity in, re in reality. In, in reality, right? and, yeah. and, and again, if you're going to stay the tradition, you know, it has to be metals. Mm -hmm. You've won a lot over the years as well. I think mm -hmm. we, we didn't. I think they're not up right now because you're doing some renovation. So they, I'd mm -hmm. imagine you can have an arcade filled with. It, with it's metals. bragging rights for a short term, though. You know, like I said, it's, yeah, you know, that's a good it, point. it's coming up right now again. You know, actually, the beers were sent there already, so we're we're oh, really? coming so you're another getting, year. Here we go. Fingers crossing. Yeah. And so one, I mean, obviously, the call it the ones that got them. The I think it was the Schwartz beer, the Black Lager. Lager, yes. the gold, and the Schoenerbach, and the, the Schoenerbach ones, Dark American Lager, mm -hmm. and then um, Oktoberfest. Yes. Uh, mm. It's interesting. I mean, had, have you uh, do you compete in the World Beer Cup with Oktoberfest as well? Okay. Two years ago, we actually won the gold medal in the uh, the Oktoberfest. And you got to remember, the Germans invented the style, <laughs> and a little Texas brewery here yeah. won the gold medal up, yeah. uh, up in Germany. And then we won a silver medal for the uh, the black lager, which yeah. is a, a a Schwartz beer. Yeah, another German and, style. And uh, we actually won a silver medal, you know, over the uh, the Czechs. So uh, oh, wow. we were we were pretty proud about that. Yeah, that's actually that's pretty amazing. I mean, obviously, I like. Is that like big news in town? Like it's in the newspaper? Like of course it's, it's like, big news. I'm yeah. imagining it would be. Like and people are. That's really exciting. Do fans come from all over the world? Like they come off the interstate and they they show up here. How often do you do tours? What, what's that like sometimes? Well, as you know, with the digital age, uh, Shiner can't hide anymore. They found us. They know where we're at. They're, yeah. they're coming from all over the world, especially knowing our Czech German heritage. A lot yeah. of Europeans are coming here now, too. But again, it's the, uh, the college kids, you know, spring breaks. So, oh, this place is just, you, you can't even <laughs> get in here. So, so with, your, with your sister breweries, Trumer and Bridgeport, you mentioned that you guys were sort of sharing some ideas. Like, do you guys ever do things like, like spend significant time at the other brewers or even brewer exchange where like maybe oh. you, you go over there, they go over here. Is that something you guys De do? Definitely. I mean, we, we will send lab people there. They'll send their lab people to see what we're doing. 
uh, you know, some brewers there. We'll send some brewers there. You got to learn from each other. So. Yeah. So when you go when you go to GABF, which is happening in a couple of weeks before filming this, I mean, do you visit all your pals all over the place? Is you, that pretty you, much you, what happens? You get to visit everybody. Get to see a lot of uh, you know faces you've you've seen throughout the years. Yeah. And, yeah. And when you've been in business 35 years, you see a lot of faces, you know. Yeah, so you find there's a bit of an old guard and new guard. Definitely feel like the veteran of the groups now. <laughs> uh, again, now you go to some of the, you know, the, you know, the the master brewers that we belong to, and the craft brewers are coming over there, and I, I feel like I've been left out because I have no tattoos or have no facial hair. But <laughs> we got a mustache. I think that's uh, you know, okay. it seems like that's a trademark now to be can, a brewer can, now. Wait, wait, what you can do is you can get one of those temporary, temporary tattoos where you can get like a. Like a like a like it's just a quick press on and then you can take that be that be pretty funny. So you think I'd fit in better that way? Or? I think that'd be pretty amazing if you showed up like that because if you showed up with all these tattoos, everyone like everyone probably be like kind of amazed. I think. I'm sure there's a lot of people around here would pay to see that too. <laughs> What do you think of the sort of explosion of all these crazy new styles people are doing? Well, if you start looking at, you know, that's that's part of being a craft brewery, ain't it? Uh, you know, coming up with new ideas, oh, yeah. no, you know, kind of, uh, you know, venturing off a little bit from the norm because, you know, you look at, there are just so many styles. You've got, a, you know, basically borders to stay within this style. It gets boring after a while. What yeah, else can yeah. you do with it? And oh, yeah, no, it's interesting. Like, I imagine I imagine the guy that's been drinking a beer for 30 years here in town, here in Shiner, that says, prickly pear beer, and he gives it a try. They're more likely to like it than not, I suspect, because it's really, really tasty beer. Is that is that kind of the reaction you almost always get? People go, they're a little skeptical, and they go, wait a minute, it's Well, the guys around here would say, is, is that what that thing in that pasture is doing over there? Y'all make beer out of that? That's probably the first thing he'd say, <laughs> but... Uh, Yes. How, uh, how many cases do you make of, of the prickly pear? Because it's, it's only it's only in the mixed pack, it, it, right? It's only in the family pack. Family and, pack yeah. and what we do in the family pack is that's really where that's our I, I have to say our craft brew pack because that's kind of telling you know reflecting our muscles and that we're showing what we all what all can do and giving you a variety. So so for the prickly pear uh, beer, do you guys use natural fruit or do you use extracts or how do you actually use them? Uh, yes, and the prickly pear very interesting because we actually use the, the real fruit of the of the prickly pear. There ain't no flavorings. This is actually I extract. This is pulp uh, from uh, from the prickly pear that we actually uh, you know use in a brew kettle and actually ferment it out. So really, so I mean that's one of the things too for folks to know is like you know natural ingredients like you know. Mm -hmm. Farm, farm to market, you're on the farm, farm to market road, like you're using the farm to market uh, materials. Is the yeast the original strain that actually came, was used way back in the early 1909, or is it like a new strain? And yeah, we were producing, you know, lagers for so many years, and, um, you know, and that was the original, original yeast that we used for, you know, forever. And uh, again, now we're getting into the ales and, and, and stuff, so we're so using- So you have a bit of a variety we, of What we call a house, uh, a house yeast now, because, you know, we can use it at other breweries. And oh, we're, they're using an ale yeast, so we're using the same strain of uh, yeast. And then again, now we're getting into the to the Belgium style, so yeah. we are having a Belgium yeast that we're going to have in house here yeah. also. So, uh, which which of the things, which of those do you think makes the biggest impact on a beer? Do you think yeast or malt or hops? Which is which is the thing that really? All of the above. <laughs> I mean, you, you can use all the same ingredients over here in Shiner, Texas, and you try to take the same you know recipe and try to brew it up in Portland, Oregon. And that beer is going to taste different, you know. And, and again, it's you know the yeast you're using, the water, you know, yeah. the equipment you're using. Uh, like you know, it's all just, these little differences. It's, right? it's all little subtle differences that at the end will make that beer taste completely different. Yeah. Everybody's using basically the same raw materials, but why are these beers tasting so different yeah. in different locations? And how are you maintaining like consistency? I mean, one thing are the consistency and quality, obviously, of the lab here. Like, do you mm -hmm. guys do a lot of sensory testing? We grew that up tremendously since 1989 when Mr. Alvarez bought us, where we were doing some rudimentary testing compared yeah. to now state-of-the-art equipment that we have in the full-time lab. Oh, for sure. I mean, because the consumer's demand and actually what they love is a real consistent beer. And, sure. and the consumer knows a craft beer and they know, you know, when it's it's not right. So you yeah, better have yeah. uh, an integrity of that product there all the time. Very cool. Do you think you'll do anything different? Um, there's some changes in the Texas beer laws lately and you know, allowing folks to sort of sell from on site was under certain size restrictions and that sort of thing. It's, did the Texas beer law changes affect any you guys in any way the way you do business or you think it's a change or I think it, it seems like some of your size that maybe work. No, it decides it, it, it we're, we're kind of out of that range but at the same time I don't think we would ever do it because we have such a good work relation with the city of Shiner we and the retailers we want to make sure that hey we're making beer they're selling beer hey yeah. let's don't take away their little bit of a chance to to, to bring some money into the town so, I so mean, it's more of a, so a kind of a community contribution thing right. you see it as and, oh very cool I mean, as we're growing right now, we you know we're really taking the environmental aspect really serious now because before we were you know really really small and didn't make that much impact, but now you know we're we're growing and 
and we just built a, a wastewater treatment plant where we're actually taking all our effluent and running it into there and actually uh, uh, it's a anaerobic digester where we're actually producing uh, biogas and running it back to our borders. You know, we, uh, you know, reclaim our yeast, uh, you know, we actually, uh, you know, instead of putting it up into the, in, into the sewer, it's getting picked up and, 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 and being, uh, you know, dried and put in dog food, cat food. So wow. uh, all our spent grain is going out to the, um, the local farmers where yeah. they're actually feeding the, the spent grain. Cardboard, we recycle all that, bale it, uh, you know, our, our plastic uh, that comes off, uh, off the pallets, you know, shrink wrap, we bale that and, and actually uh, uh, recycle it. Uh, so every, you know, glass that we, what comes out of the bottle shop, to, uh, whatever's broken up, and that's in a separate uh, dumpster that we you know, actually have the glass manufacturer come up and pick up. So anything we can do, we're, we're, we're trying right. to, and, and not only does it save us money, but it, it's, it's doing the right thing. Well, yeah, it's both, I and mean, it's wonderful you can do both those things at the same time. I mean, how, how big do you imagine you guys will become? Like, do you think you'll ever have another location? And you know, we'll do 550,000 barrels this year, yeah. and you know, and we can probably easily double that in the next 10 years. Wow, I mean, that's amazing. So we've been talking about beer a lot. We've drunk our exist first beer. So let's uh, get into some of these other specials here. So we'll start. I think the premium, which was as you said, the Cotton Ball, the original. This is the original 1909 mm -hmm. formula. Nice light lager. This one here was uh, one of the originals that. Um, that was made, uh, Cosmos Spetzel. We haven't changed it much in many, many years. Again, like I said, this is the beer I grew up on. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's a, a premium lager, uh, again. Is it all, lightly, all malt, I think? Said? This one here is, is, is malt and corn. Malt and corn, uh, okay. Yes, and again, light, lightly hopped, very popular locally yet too, still yeah. to this day. Even though Schoenerbach is, you know, 75% of our total volume, but in Shiner, Texas, this, this is the, the, this this is the, the main, main beer in town. I mean, nice, I mean, really nice, crisp, clear. Mm -hmm. I mean, for filtering, do you guys do, like, is, do you rely on the, like, the, the bottle conditioning or the conditioning to sort of we, filter? We do actually use diatomation earth. We use a, a DE filter. DE filter as well? Yes. No centrifuge or anything funky like that? Or? Not, not on this beer. Not on this beer. If you're outside, mm -hmm. this is going to be a real crisp, per per crisp clear beer, beer. Perfect beer for that. I can... Uh, Remember coming to the hospitality room when I'm about six years old with my parents and, and having one of these. You know, so. <laughs> oh, really? Well, wow. so. it's like a, it's not 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 quite like a soda pop, but it's it's you recently brought it back again. It's kind of been on and off a little bit for you. Well, no, started. it's been here. We rebranded ah, again. Okay. It's it's uh, you know kind of the original name was Shiner Beer, and uh, it was uh, Shiner Texas Tap. It was Shiner Texas Special. It was Shiner Blonde. Ah, uh, okay. now it's you know Shiner Premium. No, it's nice and crisp, clear. So, what would you? I'm, I'm going to rely on you on the recommendation of which way to go in terms of the beer. So, look after this beer, which is a nice light lager. Uh, which way would you go next? After we probably this? would go need to go with the Shiner Bach next. Okay, and the Shiner Bach, as we said, 75% of yeah. your sales, mm -hmm. known all over all over the world. And this got the, as we mentioned earlier, the the gold medal at GABF last year for the American Dark Lager category. Yep, this is our flagship beer, Shiner Bach. Yeah. Again, we're in Texas, so it's you know lightly hopped. I mean, we didn't, you know, we don't throw a lot of bittering in there. Yeah. We want just a uh, just a presence in there, yeah. overbearing. Uh, again, a very easy drinkable American yeah. Dark Lager. Yeah, I know for sure. So yeah, anyone who's been in in Texas, especially mm -hmm. you know Austin, those San Antonio, these cities. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a beer that they've had. So what would be after this one? What would you? Um, yeah, we probably would do the Cosmos next, a German amber lager. Jimmer, German amber. Mm -hmm. So what's different? What what makes it? How is a German amber different? Is it you start a little bit the bigger hop profile? Well, I'd look, yeah, lots a lot bigger hop profile. It's really nice. Quite, quite a bit of aromatics to it because yeah. we dry hop it. So we're actually not only oh. using you know our hop bill in the in the um, in the uh, brew kettle and in the whirlpool, but we're yeah. actually adding some hops in the fermenter. Yeah. So, yeah. The dry hop but all the here. aromatics to it is really coming from the from the dry hop and and um, it's a nice really nice beer like I really like yeah. really love the the, the hop uh, profile in this yeah and I like it's like really herbal but floral and then the... um, again we try to we want to make a, a beer Cosmos would be proud of yeah we figure you know a German you know <laughs> lager would be something yeah that with, would, with, a bit, with a bit more, a bit more bite yeah I mean the really nice hoppy profile to it like do you do you worry about IBUs very much like like do you, do you we do in certain in certain of our beers you know we're, we're starting to climb now you know you're yeah, looking like at a, you know where we were at uh, you know probably about 11 now to about 20 you know so we're we're, we're, we're so starting is this one in the, yeah. the 20 ish range so we're, we're starting to, That's nice, to ramp it up a little bit here so yeah but it seems, it seems to have like that again like the uh, not not definitely not the the, the piney citrus of, mm -hmm. of the west coast style but definitely more mm -hmm. of the maybe you know, the, like I said, the herbal and floral 
There's uh, one little special hop we put at the end. That's what we. Uh, so the magic. Like we'll keep that one mysterious. I'm going to keep this one. So. I'm going to go into the Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest. And this, again, we talked earlier, uh, pretty big deal. This one was a gold medal at GABF. And then I think you said it was two years ago, gold medal? Yeah, it was a, a gold medal at the European Beer Star. Right. Which is. Which and again, which is. Uh, these guys, the Germans invented this style in and, uh, and the Oktoberfest, and we want a, a well, gold medal here. Well, I think, I think as you've, the, the, this is sort of built by their descendants, the mm -hmm. Germans and Czech descendants, right? Well, it would be fitting that we drink uh, this uh, Oktoberfest when it's coming on almost in October, yeah. right? Yeah. No, and this, and I actually, I, um, I write a column for a, a web publication called Ask Man. It's one of the biggest sort of men's journals. And they, we do like monthly beer columns, so it's like September was last month. I'm doing the October, and this is this is in the October uh, beer column I'll be doing. So I'll, I'll send you guys a link when it's open. It's one of the, the four beers to try this October season. So yeah, there's a huge uh, German festival up in New Braunfels, Texas, which is about 50 miles from here. It's called Worst Fest. Oh yeah, I've heard and of that. Yeah, they have tons of this beer. There. Yeah. So what's um, what was it about this one you think that like that beat the Germans? We produced it, whatever, and the first time I taste it, I go, man, that's a, that's a good marzo. Do you know? Do you know when you've nailed it on one of the formula? Like, is this one of those ones where you made it? You go, all right. Oh, that's we, a home run. Yeah, yeah. Did, did, oh, did, did, you, have, did you have that yeah. feeling on this yeah, one? Yeah, every once in a while you do. What would you do next after this one? The black lager. The black lager, right? And that's one of the interesting things about this beer is people assume because it's, you know, it's black in color, it's like harsh and and bitter and strong. But you know, this is this is always a very surprising beer for people because, you know, when they try a black lager, they're like, wait, it's crisp and clean like a lager, but it's a bit roasty, like a porter, but it's not as heavy as a porter. To me, it's a, it, it's a Guinness, Guinness with taste. I'm, I'm just telling you, it just, <laughs> it, it's it yeah. just got such a full body flavor to it. Well, this and, is uh, this is another this is another gold medalist. Yes. Like I mean, and, and I think you said silver at the European European beer store. Yeah. So, so it's I mean, and again, they, that's it's a European style. You know, with the. Uh, with the, the Belgium style malts we use in there, uh, you know, with some of the, the Czech hops, yeah. uh, you know. It's got, it's got like a really nice smoky, roasty. Raisin, but, but, but the, yeah, chocolatey. But then, yeah, but then it's just, then it's clean again. And this was an anniversary beer that actually came back full time because people loved it. And, uh, 97. It was shown in 97. <laughs> and now it's, uh, it's part of the Shauna family. Yeah. Again, your first sip of this, just like you think, like, because you're thinking it's going to like linger with that with that really roasty profile, mm -hmm. but like you said, it just goes boom and it's gone. It's yeah, I think really people remarkable. are they they get afraid when they see the name Schwartz beer, like, oh my God, well you know that's or black that's, lager. I mean, like yeah. like if you look at this in a glass, you're thinking, oh, like you said, it's oh it's a Guinness or it's a yeah, it's it's a stout, and some people are like you know they don't want to have something that heavy. But it, it's it looks light. intimidating, but it's very easy to drink. Very very nice. Yeah. Um, I always hate putting those away. Yeah, I know. What, what would we do next? Again, we're gonna do the wild, wild hair. hair. Wild hair, and, and that was the first ale you would made for public This was consumption. our, you know, our first what we call true ale that we made. True you know, ale. With, with, you know, again, with the Texas laws, you know, if you're, you know, certain uh, percent right, of alcohol, right. you had to call it an ale, so we were obliged to call some ales that we really didn't want to, but yeah. now they kind of, uh, kind of took to. that uh, designation off of it, but at the same time now we got ale yeast and we're yeah. doing right. uh, signature ales now. This is American. Pale ale. It's got a veil to it. You're going to see yeah, it's cloudy. Little, it's so, uh, so it's not de filtered. So you don't de filter yeah, this one. It's Interesting. So you, can, so you can control the level of obviously centrifuge. You're not, you're not trying to pull everything out of the you're centrifuge. You're not trying to pull everything out. I try to get the yeast off it, most of it. Again, this is a, another dry hop beer. Uh, again, when you start you know, doing this in little bigger tanks, it's a little more difficult to dry hop. But you have to throw bales of hops in there. And we're doing those in, in, in smaller tanks. Yeah. Uh, so uh, again, we're. Looking forward to doing, you know, future ales. And, yeah, more ales. I mean, it, yeah, Belgians would be really interesting. Like, so, yeah, one thing I, I did mean to ask, and I think especially when you get into Bel Belgians, you'll have to go there, but higher ABVs. Like, you'll have to, like you mentioned in the past, you've done occasionally over seven, or is there a reason you don't do higher ABV beers, or is it something that, you know, when, when the style dictates it? Because, again, these typically don't have a higher... There's a lot of things that, you know, sometimes style dictates it, and sometimes, and again, you go into, like, uh, different states, uh, they regulate it. Yeah. With the alcohol Utah. can be so go, go, like I mean, yeah, or, go, drink, you know, go drink beer. Then you Utah. go like Tennessee, they have these yeah. some, some crazy laws. So sometimes you have to, you know, you have to look at that as a as a whole too. You have and, to consider you know, mm -hmm. all those things. That's so, the prickly pear. Is this the, is, is the prickly pear. It's amazing because I, I think what people when they smell this, they say, Oh, that's gotta be some kind of chemical or some kind of flavoring, but you smell this thing. I, I, I hate to think when I get out of it right off the bat, I, I think Jolly Rancher. 
Yeah, it's like sort of almost a cherry, uh, I mean, like a cherry. I got a bit of it's cherry and jar. Very, it's very unique. But it doesn't have that sweet. This is almost it. a kosh base. Oh, so there's yeah, so got a little like, dryness to so, the so, end so, of it. So, yeah. the, so the, the base mm -hmm. on this is, 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 is pretty subtle. Mm -hmm. And then you just layer this on top. Do you get any color? Is there any? Because prickly pears are kind of purple generally, aren't they? Like, That's where you get the color from. It is uh, really no. So it's a really pale base beer, but you, so you get a bit like caramelly. The, the pop is real reddish, reddish yeah. tint, so that's what kind of gives it that amberish color. Wow, well, that's is really... that interesting or what? No, it, it, it's 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 very it's interesting, but it's also exceptionally well balanced. Mm -hmm. Like I find because one of the things you find with when pe people add something to the beer, mm -hmm. um, there's quite a few that kind of fall into that novelty mm -hmm. category that they, that, that you would say you'd say oh, I'd never have a second one. I'll try mm -hmm. it once. But I'd have I have. I'd have three of these in a second. Like it's it's a really really tasty beer. Well, like, especially when you get some of these um, these favorite type of beers uh, with the pulp and stuff, and you got to make sure that you don't yeah. uh, you don't knock, you know knock the balance out with the hops and and, and yeah. take away from the the fruit and 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 and, and throw in the the aromatics of the hops that kind of give it a different profile. Yeah, because they so probably they probably would mess with. They the, they really have to they have to kind of harmonize together to be able to really wow. fit together. So there's a lot, does it take a lot of experimentation to get kind of the right hop uh, And getting the right and, hops, you know. And, yeah, and, so you can see how right that would, because the, even though, you, like, as you said, it's got that kind of fresh candy, mm -hmm. I get a bit of cherry, but also the Jolly Rancher, definitely Jolly you're Rancher. You're going to think about Jolly Rancher from now on. Yeah, no, no, I know, but, 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 but then you get that and you go like, it, it, throw in a resiny hop and it, boom, mm -hmm. it's gone. Like, mm -hmm. it's going to be like a mess. Like, it'll mm -hmm. kind of, so it's got to be very subtle and very well put together. We got one left. Holiday cheer. Okay. Holiday cheer. Is, 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 is it a little early for the holidays, or is it's, it? It's we're just producing right now. Again, it's it's for the season, so you know Oktoberfest is going to be phased out. Yeah. And now the holiday cheer. So we're looking at towards the winter season. I mean, does that look like a Christmas present or what? <laughs> I mean, that's well, uh, that, that's that, uh, that, that plus holiday the, cheer. Look at the color. I mean, like it's yeah, real reddish, sort of coppery. And, 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 and the, this is a Dunkelweizen by by. Uh, Definition. Dunkel buys them, but it's filtered, obviously. Like it's it's filtered. Yeah. But it's a it's a dark wheat. I'd like to call this fruit cake in a bottle. Yeah. Like Be a, because like the reason I'm saying is because it has oh, okay. it has Texas pecans and it has hill oh. country peaches in here. Ah, the peaches. Okay. Peaches I got it. in there. Very very fruity. Very um. And the finish again. Finish is a little bit dry. Like it's not mm. no over overpowering sweetness. And also, actually, one thing we hadn't really talked about is just the general body in all these beers. Mm. I mean, like. Like really nicely carbonated and kind of medium body, light body in some cases, but just none of them, none of them sit on your tongue real heavy. The thing about this one that's really, I find really interesting is, I find that sort of slight sour fruitiness in here, mm -hmm. like almost fighting with those things in a good way. Like you know, like a bit mm -hmm. of sourness with the bitterness with the sweetness, it all kind of like fights it out, and you have what you end up having is a more interesting beer. Which yeah, is, all which those favorites got to get along till it goes down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one thing I always do is I declare a favorite, uh, and. I would say the prickly pear is my favorite. Uh, you know, that is a super delicious beer. Cosmos and, and, and Holiday Cheer right up there. And even, and you know, the Black Lager also is great. But I mean, mm -hmm. prickly pear is just so elegant and subtle. Uh, it was spectacular. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, really, really mm -hmm. delicious. Would you pick in more than one? That's impressive. I now, cheat. Huh? I, 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 you can't only pick one of these beers. I mean, come on. Awesome being here. It's it's a great experience. You guys are a total institution here in Texas, mm -hmm. and I mean, it sounds like the business is going really gangbusters, which is great to see. You know, a lot, lot of local employment, and like I said, the, the people here, the sense of pride they have in this place is, is really heartwarming. And you know, it's been just a great experience, and it's been really, mm -hmm. really delicious. And really appreciate your time and your charge this whole place. Well, no, appreciate having you over here and and, and just talking about beer. So I think we need a salute. Yeah, salute. Who loves it. Trozen, cheers, <laughs> Nazdorovia, Nazdrovi, Skol. I, I, I have all kinds of. I, I, I we Kampai, Ching Ching. Uh, like there's a lot I, of them. I, 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 that Kampai don't sound too good on beer. Kampai, sorry about that. <laughs>